Yeah. Now, moving along, uh, for some reason, after 1990, after the Highland Towers incident, you know, you thought that the developers would be more concerned about the safety uh, pertaining to hill slopes mm -hmm. and how they construct their properties there. But hill slopes, even though they seem to still attract development, uh, there seems to be a certain lapse in safety. And uh, there have been more incidents. Putra Heights have been stuck up, and most recent, uh, Satyawangsa. recently, Satyawangsa, of yeah. course, uh, with the um, wall coming down. Mm. So people have had their houses actually declared unsafe for occupancy. So that's pretty serious. Uh, we're going to be talking to, of course, our guests on CIDB's established expert standing committee on yes. slope safety. We have in senior Tan Yen Chin, uh, Board of Engineers, Malaysia BEM, and he's one of the members of the committee. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. All right. So first of all, could you explain or you know, to the audience as well, uh, the establishment of the committee. Okay, the committee is established as CIDB Construction Industry Development Board. Yeah. Basically, to address the concern by the public on the slope safety. So this committee consists of uh, stakeholders from various construction industry, and they are experts in the field of uh, geotechnical engineering. They are geologists. Mm -hmm. There are people from the. Department of Safety and Health and uh, uh, Ministry of Housing, Local Government mm -hmm. and also from the stakeholders such as uh, Master Builders, uh, Association of uh, Developers mm -hmm. and also Institutional Engineers, Association of Consultants, all those. Mm -hmm. So basically the committee is formed to basically have the experts to deliberate and to suggest and recommend uh, necessary policies and recommendations to the government so that can, they can improve the slope safety in Malaysia. All right. Now, my next question is, why? Why are hill slopes still such a big draw for developers? Knowing that there's a potential risk, knowing that, you know, monsoon seasons are apparent in That's Malaysia, right. and uh, it's quite alarming to actually develop in such an area, but yet they are drawn to build houses there. Why? Okay, uh, put it this way. The, if you look at Klang Valley itself, so which I'm saying Klang Valley, and uh, you look at like Penang, which I'm from, mm. born, you see, the, the flatland are less and less, mm -hmm. and the population increasing. Mm -hmm. And to ease the housing problem, people have to move either. In Singapore, what they do, they reclaim the sea. Mm -hmm. But in Malaysia, we have our hills that people tend to go to. Mm -hmm. And just like Hong Kong, they have no choice but to go to the hill and also go to the sea. So going to the hill is, un, un, what they call it, cannot be pre prevented. Mm -hmm. But it's important if you're going to the hill, if necessary planning, design, construction, and even some maintenance. So depending on the structures you put in, some will need more maintenance and some will need less. Mm -hmm. But it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. to go. It's inevitable. Less of land. Uh, this is also at the expense of uh, green lung catchment areas such as yes. Bukit Gasing and all that. They're being, uh, well, systematically reduced in size mm. because of development around the areas. So are these factors also taken into account when coming up with your recommendations? Uh, basically, it's important that policy makers on the, like, uh, master plan for the any uh, local councils or whatever, they have to consider both. They have to consider development at the same time preservation of environment. Mm -hmm. I think this is more on government's uh, decision, what direction are we moving. So, but I think our, this committee, we, we mainly will focus on slope safety. Mm -hmm. okay. As for the green lungs, we leave it to the government and the NGOs and to, to decide what to do to preserve the, the land or whatever but our committee will be stressing on safety mm -hmm. mm. all right well with the concern of uh, impending landslides happening especially during monsoon season mm -hmm. uh, are those living on on the hill or around the hill slopes are they more at risk of you know all this unwanted tragedies to happen would you say uh is uh, should I they think, be more concerned <laughs> i think basically People are concerned when they see incidents happen. Right. But sometimes overly concerned can be also dangerous. True. Mm -hmm. So what certain states have done, uh, they have done what hazard mapping. Mm -hmm. The the local local government have uh, engaged some specialists to do the satellite photos and the analysis of GIS data, and then from there they will identify areas which are called high risk slope. Mm. And if this area has been identified, then the government rightly if a resources available should do something. Mm -hmm. And in Hong Kong, they did it quite well. The reason is that the government cannot be spending so much money on private properties. Right. Mm. So what the Hong Kong government through, they call it the Geotechnical Engineering Office, what they do is that they have such thing called dangerous hillside order. Mm. Basically, the specialists who, who, who visit, which is other from the engineering office, will visit 
slopes area and if they identify this slope area to be the high risk they will issue what you call a dangerous hill slope order to the owner of the slope mm -hmm. that means they have to repair the slope and strengthen or maintain the slope within certain duration mm -hmm. if they don't do it that's chargeable under the law can we do something similar to that actually some of the recommendation this committee will come up will go along that line mm -hmm. and this need to be working with the government the local government to amend the law accordingly mm -hmm. to have this so that the government shall not be the sole responsibility for slope safety but the mm -hmm. owners of the land itself the owners of the properties mm -hmm. shall be also be responsible for it now the recent landslide in taman sitiawangsa it's a tragedy that echoed bukit antarabangsa it's similar similar area and a similar incident mm -hmm. uh, but there were walls built really in that area what happened to these walls what was wrong with them okay uh, i i cannot personally comment on this because any engineering failure is usually there are people go on site and start to give some statement. Uh, that yeah. is very unfair to the whole situation. Yes. Okay. The reason is that it's much complicated than just by visually looking at it and you can identify what is the causes. Mm -hmm. Then, just like doctors, without seeing you through on the phone, they will know where to operate on you. Okay. And some of the statement made in the press is actually misleading the public. Mm -hmm. I did bring some uh, some of the figures here. Ah. Basically, this I think you all be familiar yes. right. with seeing yeah. this. So you can see from here, this is a failure and I have been widely reported in the newspaper. But a lot of people call this uh, soil nail, mm. retaining wall. But basically yeah. the correct term for this is called anchored slope. An anchored slope. You can yeah. see that, guys. Yeah, now so we know. That's okay, why is, really what, how to differentiate from others? You can see anchored, basically, they are, we have, case, we have casing coming out which yes. protect the strength. Yes. And you can see that a torpedo coming out, yes. each one. So basically, anchor slope, if you look at the British standard in the design, mm -hmm. basically the British code says, if you have these anchored slopes, which mm -hmm. if you use it for permanent, for the first three years, you need to maintain it every six months. Basically, go and restress it. That means they pull, the, they open up this casing. Oh. In there, there is the steel strand coming out. Right. They pull it and check the stress. Mm -hmm. That means to make sure that they are still working. Then after the three years, then you can see from the record of the of the stressing for the last three years, determine what is the duration of maintenance required. But the code these days cannot be longer than five years. Okay, who has the responsibility of doing these maintenance yes. works? Okay, that is the question that I cannot answer. Okay. The reason <laughs> is that is it handed over? Who mm. is responsible for this and things like that? But I so I also want to show some of the one of the oh, newspaper they publica. saw anchor slope in Fred, but this is not anchor slope this, oh, this is, is called color coordination soy nail slope. <laughs> nothing with the color okay nothing nothing with the, the color they just paint it nice so it's been nailed right yes it's the nail uh -huh. and the main difference is that you can see these are only cap there is no anchor there is no casing coming right. up right and you can see from this, actually Hong Kong has banned anchored slope for the last, I think, 18 to 15 years ago. Why, why so? The reason is that maintenance. Okay. You need to go and stress it. Just imagine the slope so high, you have mm -hmm. to have people going up to the anchored slope, yep. to going up to the anchor slope, and every one of it, you have to open up, stress it with your with the machine to right. make sure, and just imagine how much cost will be involved in the maintenance. Right. Compared to this, Soinia soap, which the Hong Kong now have been widely using, is that these are basically no need to maintain uh, in terms of stressing. Is it what safer you need to too? In terms of safety, if both are done properly and maintained, mm -hmm. even anchor soap, mm -hmm. this is equally safe. I see. So okay. it's not to say this will be unsafe, this is safe. No, it's okay. equally safe if they have been designed, built, maintained properly. As for the soinia slopes, the reason is that you have less maintenance. You okay. need to cut grass and make sure things oh, uh, don't block and that's it. Yeah. Now, uh, anchored slope or not, I noticed a house built right on top of the anchored slope. Mm -hmm. uh, what's wrong with that picture? Can a house really be built that close to the slope? Actually, in engineering terms of view, term point of view, mm -hmm. basically, if the slope has been properly designed, and there's nothing wrong to build the house just beside it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's okay. really Just close. imagine, yeah. you go to overseas, you see yeah. house being built at the cliff, and it's so nice that it's so famous, that they become uh, what they call a tourist attraction. It's important to ensure if it is safe, you can build house, even you can build high-rise beside it if yep. they're properly engineered, constructed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, engineer, you and I are from Penang. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we know Ai Aitam, basically. That's the area <laughs> that, that's quite close to Bukit Bendera. Yeah. And a lot of houses there are built on the slope. They're not 
beside the slope, they're actually on the slope. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see these houses when you take the cable car up to Bukit Manera. Yeah. Mm. So we've never heard of any landslides or falling houses uh, for the last 20 years. I, I don't think we will ever hear anything of that uh, sort. So what was done right by then. building those houses mm. and what's <laughs> done wrong today by building these uh, retaining walls and that yeah. seem to give way? Uh, it's difficult to say. Basically, if you look at the development of uh, geotechnical engineering, actually, we should be able to build safer things now right, right. than mm. previously. Yes. And uh, I would not be commenting on this particular failure. It's unfair because I'm not personally involved to investigate it. I see. Well, not but this one in particular, but yeah. generally, mm. failures like this. Um, yeah. I think it boils down to uh, er many aspects because in terms of planning, in the terms of design, design yeah. by the consultants, okay. the construction by the contractors, uh, they must be properly supervised. And the maintenance after that. And after that, the maintenance. Okay. So, in Malaysia, as we all know, uh, Malaysian tents do not like to, to, to... We are very good in building, but I think we are not very good in maintaining. Yes. So, when you design some things, it's good to know that you better design something which require minimum maintenance, which they will still function properly with minimum maintenance. Mm -hmm. I think it's important, my statement I can make uh -huh. is that important to have a proper planning, mm -hmm. proper design, mm -hmm. proper construction and followed by maintenance. Uh -huh. Then yep. I would say current structures are what equally, if not better, will be equally safe as the, yep. the Penang bungalow that you have mentioned in the Bukit Bandera. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those houses have been there for generations. I have never heard exactly. anything wrong yeah. with them. I mean, with the recent tragedy that happened in uh, Taman City Wangsa, mm -hmm. where one of the comments made was because uh, the slope shouldn't have been too, you know, it's, steep. It's, yeah, steep. Mm. It should be more tapered. But mm. even then, you know, tapered or not, it, it still happened, right? And then when and you mm. said that this anchored slope, mm. this is one of the... Uh, a schematic, the, just a schematic. schematic yeah. yeah, so this is how it's done, isn't it? Uh, this is a schematic showing how it's function. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can see from this anchored slope itself, you okay. have this strand coming out, mm -hmm. which there'll be many, many rods, many rods coming out, which you need to restress. And you can right. see from here, each like, this is so actually... So these are the caps? Yeah. That's uh, on on the Taman City Wangsa. Ah, this moment, is right? uh, this, but this that means it's a typical sketch, yes. but does not represent the actual Taman. It's just for right. uh, what they call it explanation purposes. Mm -hmm. yep. Compared to soil nail, you can see mm -hmm. in in soil this Sertia yes, Wangsa, basically nail, one right. row, and but in soil nail, you will have many rows of nails in one one slope itself. Right. So uh -huh. each one is actually one nails. Oh. Uh -huh. The scary thing is, I yeah. seem to see more anchored slopes along the highways. You know, exactly. rather than the soy nails. Yep. Uh, um, I think there's a good mix. Uh, mm -hmm. Not really, because I think you see more soy nail. More but soy if you nail. now you're aware that if you see caps without any Colors. any cylinders <laughs> smoking out, that is actually right. soy yeah. nail. We'll look you out for those. You can uh, see this one those. in, uh, I think, near Publica. Yeah, in, uh, near Publica. Solaris. This is, uh, this is soy nail, yeah. it's not anchored slope. This is quite obvious. Mm. This is a uh, uh, representation of a soy nail. Mm. Uh, anyway, uh, the committee itself, you can only come up with recommendations. Yes. And to be ratified into treaties or, yep. or law, basically, that's on the government? Yes. Mm -hmm. So which, which government? Are we talking about state government or local federal government? Okay. government? Our recommendation will, will cut across from the, look, uh, from the federal government, uh, central government to the local government. Because in order to address this, you have to be from the federal government on the major policies because some, some jurisdiction covers highways, some hill land is not only local government, some are federal government. And for the go local government, so there will be recommendations. Right. Mm -hmm. Can so the public make any <coughs> contributions to this? Yes, especially the residents, uh, you know, the overly concerned residents, yeah. especially. Uh, actually, this <laughs> committee, we also consist of uh, FOMCA, which okay. is uh, we also will be inviting representative, representative from the Housing uh, Buyers Association. So that means this committee is widely. It means it's called the stakeholders. Stakeholders, right. that means you are from buyers to the developers, to the contractors, to the consultant, to the government officers, to the local government. So that we come together, we deliberate, we discuss, and we propose uh, some policies or strategies for the government to hopefully to adopt. All right. Before we say goodbye to you, Insignia, mm. uh, what are the best forms of remunerations for individuals living in houses 
uh, who've actually been affected by uh, landslides. Yeah, Things compensation. Like uh, I'm an engineer, so I'm not... Uh, so I Best can't comment the on the accounting comes in. Yeah. <laughs> the accounting comes in, because yeah. they've had their houses ba basically declared True. unsafe for yeah. occupancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for more information about this uh, committee, they can go to the website, right? CIDB.gov.my? Uh, because we just have our first meeting, yes. so we just have our minutes. But we did, ha did have our press release, mm -hmm. but uh, there will be a... Mi uh, what they call it, continuing meeting because it's a standing committee mm -hmm. and we will have a monthly meeting and we will deliberate and hopefully we will come up with some recommendations soon. All the best to you and yeah, thank Dr. You. Gray, your chairman, uh, yes. in uh, conducting your meetings and of course coming up with recommendations to make Hillsborough development safer in Malaysia. Yes, thank you so much, Insignia. We you. hope to see you again for okay. further developments. Right. Uh, right now, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> and we will move on to our next topic but before that, we're going to take a really short break and also let you have and enjoy this uh, wonderful performance from Khadija Cook. Don't go away.